Hi, I'm Jordan Rubin. Welcome to Ancient Medicine Today, brought to you by DrAxe.com, where food is medicine. Today we're going to talk about a prevalent issue among people across the world. It's called SIBO or SIBO, and that stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which causes all kinds of gut issues from Crohn's and colitis to celiac disease to gas, bloating, IBS, GERD, you name it. So if you're someone who deals with digestive issues, leaky gut, it's all related to the balance of the bacteria and an imbalance in your small intestine. Best of all, we're gonna talk about how to get rid of this bacterial overgrowth with a few simple steps. First of all, what is SIBO? It is, as I mentioned, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. The small intestine should not harbor a lot of bacteria. The large intestine or colon is where bacteria is concentrated. And in case you're wondering, I have great experience with this as I suffered from Crohn's colitis over 20 years ago myself and overcame it through biblical health principles and powerful probiotics. But you may have SIBO even if your gut doesn't feel bad. You might have autoimmune disease. You might have thyroid issues. You might be overweight. All of those conditions are related to SIBO. SIBO can cause malabsorption of nutrients, especially fat-soluble vitamins and iron. Fat-soluble vitamins are A, D, E, and K, and they're so important. You need to be balanced to absorb nutrients from foods. You can damage intestinal lining, leading to that gut hyperpermeability or leaky gut, nutritional deficiencies, and here's the good news. SIBO can be overcome, but you've got to work it following the steps. SIBO can be caused just by aging. As we age, our intestinal tract, if you're looking at the screen, is actually huge. If you stretch out your intestine, it's 18, 20 feet long, but the microvilli, the little hairs there, if you stretch that out, People say it's the size of two tennis courts. That's the sites of absorption in your small intestine. It is huge, and we've got to get it going. Pancreatitis, type 2 diabetes, and the upward and downward motion of your insulin. Diverticulosis, small pockets in the colon, which lodge food and undigested particles, can lead to bacterial overgrowth. Structural deficit in the small intestine could have been born with it. Injury, fistula, which is a protrusion that can come from another organ or system and stick into part of your intestinal tract. That can be an issue. Intestinal lymphoma, scleroderma, which is an autoimmune disease. An abdominal in injury, whether it's a car accident or something that would cause an injury. Eating disorders often result in an imbalance in bacteria, immune system disorders, celiac disease, and many medications, antibiotics being the greatest. If you've ever used antibiotics even once, orally or topically, you likely have some level of SIBO. Here's other signs, my goodness, rosacea, nausea, bloating, vomiting, diarrhea, malnutrition, weight loss, joint pain, fatigue, rashes, acne is a big one, eczema, asthma, and depression, all signs. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give you a few diet tips that are really critical, but first, I'm Jordan Rubin for Ancient Medicine Today, brought to you by DrAxe.com, and we're talking about SIBO. We're talking about the gut and its relationship to the entire body, and if you know anyone who has gut issues, frequent stomach aches, gas, bloating, Crohn's colitis, send this link to them, it just might save their gut. Number one on the diet tips, avoid disaccharide carbohydrates. Dairy, grains, sugar are principal. Some would need to eliminate potatoes and sweet potatoes. Certain legumes such as soybeans can be a challenge. Sugars such as maple syrup, those are the big ones. But if you just eliminate or lower the consumption of grains and dairy, or at the very least, switch to fermented dairy, yogurt and kefir, sour cream and cheese, and switch to sprouted or sourdough grains, like sourdough bread that's whole grain, sprouted cereal, that's a good step. Those are quick diet tips. In addition, consume fermented foods such as sauerkraut, pickled vegetables. Those are great to replenish the gut. Supplements 
Here's some good supplements for SIBO. Number one, probiotics. Look for a probiotic with soil-based organisms, Bacillus coagulans, Bacillus subtilis, Bacillus clossi, and the friendly yeast, Saccharomyces boulardii. Digestive enzymes are a great supplement for SIBO to get your bacteria in order, and you can consume a good quality fiber from chia seed or flaxseed that is high in soluble fiber. That is good to balance your intestinal tract. And if you've got a serious imbalance, consume herbals that contain antimicrobial function, such as oregano, thyme, and even peppermint. Those are all really good supplements. Essential oils, man, this is huge. Essential oils such as oregano, cinnamon, thyme, peppermint, and ginger, as well as turmeric, are powerful digestive support. And I'm talking about taking them internally, mixed in liquid, used in smoothies, or you can even mix with a carrier and rub it topically on their gut. Cinnamon gets rid of can excess candida levels that often accompany bad bacteria. Oregano and thyme have antibacterial properties, absolutely. We're looking at other oils like cinnamon and ginger, which help balance the gut. Remember, when consuming essential oils orally, particularly oregano, take a high quality probiotic at least once a day, preferably at night. Lifestyle changes. Stress is a big contributor to SIBO. Environmental toxicity is a big contributor. So if you can somehow limit your toxic exposure and of course, make sure that you are in an environment where you can relieve stress. Elevated cortisol levels are a big component to small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Folks, on Ancient Medicine Today, our desire is to transform your health, and we believe it starts in the gut. If you've got gas or bloating, Crohn's or colitis, celiac, diverticulitis, GERD, or maybe it's inflammation, maybe it's an autoimmune disease, diabetes, maybe you've got a skin condition like acne, rosacea, or who knows what, even brain disorders such as Alzheimer's, dementia, and in children, autism, ADHD, almost every case involves small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. The medical community knew it 100 years ago. Hippocrates knew it a lot longer than that ago, and you know it now. We talked about some diet tips, lowering dairy, grains, other disaccharide carbohydrates, supplements like a powerful probiotic with SBOs, digestive enzymes, a fiber with flax or chia, really, really good, essential oils such as cinnamon, oregano, thyme, peppermint, ginger, lifestyle changes, reduce stress, and remove some environmental toxicity. Water's a big one. Don't drink or shower in water unless it's filtered. Bottom line, folks, if you wanna get healthy, stick with us. Here at DrAxe.com, we have the world's leading natural health newsletter where we have nearly 2,000 articles to transform your health. Subscribe and get more information on SIBO and virtually every health condition. Also, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Join the nearly 1 million people who have access to ancient medicine today each Monday through Friday, 1030 a.m. Central Time. I'm Jordan Rubin, wishing you great health. Hi, Dr. Axter, I wanna say thanks so much for checking out this YouTube video, and also don't forget to subscribe if you wanna get more great content on things like herbs, essential oils, natural remedies, and how to use food as medicine. Also, check out more of our content on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.